So right now I am at the Blue Eddy booth here at RE Plus and they've got a whole booth full of new products. So check them out. So you guys are familiar with the Apex 300s. I've got this set up right here, the Apex 300s with the A1 hub and they've got a brand new product here. This is the AT1 and this is basically a whole home backup like micro grid device. So you got 200 amps that can come in and go through. They can disconnect from the grid and back up. So this here is the Energy Pro 6K. And the way I understand it, on the system we just looked at, if you have the Apex 300s, they will be the inverter and the battery for that system. They'll be the storage and the inverter. If you don't have the Apex 300 and then you, you have AC coupled solar, you would use this instead. So this would be your inverter and battery for that micro grid interconnect device that we were just looking at. So you, you configure it differently depending on what your system is. AC coupled, you would use this. If you're DC coupled or if you have the AC um, Apex, I'm sorry, Apex 300 system, you would use those. This one is for whole home backup as well. This is like their old, I think it was the EP900, but this is bigger. So this is a 13,200 watt Inverter, they, they say that this can take 150 uh, locked rotor amps. They claim it will start a five ton a AC air conditioner unit. But uh, this right here is the inverter and it has your solar connections up here. You've got your uh, solar disconnect on here as well. And I, I think it was gonna take somewhere over 20,000 watts of solar. It can take AC coupled or DC coupled solar into this system and then you can stack batteries to adjust the amount of storage that you need. Uh, real, real similar to the old EP900 system, but it's just been improved and enlarged. Now one question I get all the time is people are always wondering, what do I need to back up a refrigerator to keep my food or my freezer from going bad when I have a power outage? And that's really hard to, to size a, a solar power system that's sized for the, the small uh, power that a refrigerator requires, but also have the, the amount of storage that you need to be able to power it for days. So they came up with a device that is specifically designed for refrigerator backup. And this one device here is designed to power up a fridge and run it for about a day and a half. But if that's not enough storage, you can add up to uh, four of these, a total of four modules. Uh, to it to expand it. So if you add one more, now you've got about three days worth of storage. If you all add it all the way up to four modules, you'll have about six days of storage to power a refrigerator. Now this is just a, uh, it's a small inverter, 120 volts sized for a refrigerator. You look at the top of it up here, you can see there's 120 volt outlets up there to, to power your fridge. And then it also plugs into the wall. As soon as there's a power outage, it automatically backs it up. This is basically a UPS uh, designed, to an un uninterruptible power supply designed specifically for refrigerator or freezer. So they also have a new alternator charger. I've got the Charger 1, now they have the Charger 2. So mine's like 500 watts, and I believe this one's 800 watts, and it's got a battery switch, or you know, like on-off switch on here. Don't believe they had that before, but this hooks to the alternator of your vehicle and then allows you to fast charge your power stations or your Blue Eddy products um, through the solar charging port is how it works. So you can actually use this with other brands of you know, power stations as long as they have a solar input. But this one is, is bigger than the last one they made. So it's, it's made for a vehicle that has a fairly large alternator, more for probably a big truck or a big RV, something like that. But if you wanna charge in the vehicle, these alternator chargers, these are the way to go. So on this blue wall behind me here, Blue Eddy has came out with a brand new ecosystem designed for campers and RVs. Uh, so campers and RVs usually have two voltages. They usually have a DC voltage that usually runs the, like the lights, sometimes the refrigerators. And, but then you also have your AC outlets that normally run the stuff you plug in, some of the other stuff in the camper, but you have two voltages in a camper. So this is an ecosystem to help uh, basically give you a backup power, solar power for your RV or camper. So right here, this is the power hub. This is the RV5 power hub. This is a five kilowatt inverter. And then it can also take in 
like shore power, 120 volt shore power. Uh, like at a campground or where you have it parked, you can take that in there. It can take power from your alternator if you're driving down the road. And then it can also take in flexible solar panels or solar pan like a solar array hook up to that so that it can always be helping to power loads or to charge the battery. And then they also are gonna have a 48 volt battery that attaches to the system. That way when you're not plugged in, you don't have solar, you still have power in your RV. That way if you wanna boondock it and just park your camper anywhere, you still got power. Now not all campers and RVs are the same. A lot of them have 12 volt DC circuits. Some may have 12 or uh, 24 volts. Some may have 48 volts. The DC might vary depending on what kind of RV you have. But this is selectable. So you can select which DC you want and then it'll output 120 volts AC, the appropriate DC voltage for your camper. You can wire it into the existing fuse box and breaker box in your camper. But if you don't, don't want to do that, they actually make a distribution panel right here. Power distribution panel for your camper. As we look inside, you can see we've got a space here for, for breakers for 120 volt power. And then you've got a row of fuses right here for your DC power. And you can wire up the camper using the distribution box. You don't necessarily have to. That's if, um, if you don't want to wire it into your existing ones, you can use that. And then to top it all off, they have a LCD screen. Looks to be about like a nine inch LCD screen. You can mount it in your camper, monitor the whole system, the energy levels, your battery, uh, while you're going down the road or whether you're parked. But I, I like the whole idea of being able to have a whole ecosystem designed around RVs and campers uh, because it's just kind of a unique thing. They're usually, they're usually 120 volts and they're usually got a DC portion of it as well. And this will help integrate all that in so you got battery backup and solar. I think it's a great idea. One other thing here at the Blue Eddie booth is this new power station right here. The thing that's different about it is it's actually a sodium ion battery, not a lithium ion battery. So different technology. It'll be interesting to see how this comes out, what the price point will be. But that may be somewhere where the industry's going is they may be heading more toward the sodium ion batteries instead of lithium because sodium is way easier to get a hold of, right? We have an ocean full of salt, which is made out of sodium. And I think over the next few years, we're gonna see a lot more sodium ion batteries come out. And this power station, I believe it is rated at like 4,000 cycles. And it's actually rated for like negative 15 Celsius or something like that. It's actually rated colder than a lithium battery if you have a cold environment. But it'll be interesting to see how much this power station comes out at. And it'll be interesting to see lithium technology changing to sodium over the next few years. It's probably gonna be something we'll see a lot of. And behind me here, right there, you may not recognize him, you may. Average Joe is right there from Average Joe's YouTube channel. If you wanna check him out, he does a bunch of solar videos as well. But anyway, that is the Blue Eddy booth here at RE Plus, and I'm not sure if I got all the specs and all the things I said right, but that's the way I remember it and understand it. I did have somebody walk me through everything, but I think that it looks like they've got a lot of new products looking like they're gonna come out next year.